Hey creative people, you're watching Shiny Films, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create this super clean, but also super customizable glitch transition in HitFilm Express. Today's video tutorial will be rated 4 out of 5 on the difficulty scale. It will be more difficult than most of my normal tutorials, but I will try to go through everything step by step so that even if you don't understand everything, you should be able to get it by the end of this tutorial. So let's just get into this. As I said before, this is super customizable, and of course there's not kind of one effect that you just drag and drop on in HitFilm to create this glitch transition, so there's tons of different ways to do this in HitFilm. I'm going to show you one way which uses multiple different techniques so that hopefully you can customize and create your own. I'm going to start from the very beginning. We've got nothing here except two images in our media panel. So I'm going to create a composite shot which we're going to use to do our transition. Click New, Composite Shot in the media panel. I'm just going to rename this final composite. Now I only want the transition to last a top of two seconds so I'm just going to create a four second duration and I'm just going to have it at 1920 by 1080 at 29.97 but of course you can choose all of your custom settings and just hit OK. Now I'm just going to highlight these by clicking one, holding shift and clicking the other and then I'll drag them into my timeline like so. Once they're in my timeline Having them both selected, I'm going to right click on them, go up to transform, and then select fit to frame width, so that they scale down to fit our frame width and don't mess up with the proportional scaling. We can check that the bottom one is uh, properly in place by just unselecting them and then hiding the top layer to see that the bottom one is properly in place. Okay, so let's go ahead and show both of these layers. The next step is to create another comp. Rather than doing the transition, we're going to create another comp to determine what our glitch effect will really look like. So click New, Composite Shot, and use the same settings, 4 seconds, 1920 by 1080 at 29.97, whatever settings you use there. I'm just going to re rename this one to Displacement Map. When you're done, just hit OK, and a new blank comp will be created. Now it's time to actually apply our effects. Simply go to New Layer, Plane, and you can rename this whatever you want, but it doesn't really matter. And you can leave the color and everything, uh, anything, anything you want, and just hit OK. Now go into the Effects panel, and just search up for Fractal Noise. Fractal Noise is a really cool effect that basically creates this randomly generated image texture. The Fractal Noise in HitFilm is actually really good because it's super customizable, and there's tons of different types of noise to choose from. So let's go into the Controls panel and open up our Fractal Noise effect. I won't run you through the details of this effect. There's lots of different ways you can adjust the appearance and subsettings and transform, all of that, but most of it is pretty self-explanatory and you should be able to figure it out anyway just by messing around with the sliders. But today I'm just going to show you the basics if you want to create this glitchy kind of look. Don't mess around with the presets, instead just go straight to the type. You can mess around with all of these to see what they do, but wood is the one we want today. It creates this really nice texture. And in interpolation, go from cubic to block so we get nice hard edges rather than this smooth cubic interpolation. Now with this block selected you can change a bunch of things. If you go into transform you can change the most basic of stuff, rotate it like so or scale which is the most useful. You can get more detailed textures by scaling it out or you can get closer textures like so. I'm actually going to go for a slightly bigger than normal texture size like so. You can mess around with all the other settings, but for now, we're just going to keep it like it is and move on. To show you what we're going to be doing with this displacement map, just go back to our final comp, and then just drag from the media panel the displacement map comp to the bottom of our video. You can see, if we hide the top two layers, that there it is, just the still image. What we're going to do is we're going to use it as a displacement map, and the displacement map will basically tell these two images where it's going to be changing their pixels. Let's drag on the displacement effect to see what we can do. So just search up for it and drag on the basic displacement effect. The layer only shows you that it can only be done in a composite shot. Let's first drag it onto field one. As you notice, it's done some pretty weird stuff, but let's just go ahead and open it to see what we're going to do. First of all, in the source layer, select the displacement map. This way, it'll move the pixels depending on where the pixels in our displacement map are. The max horizontal displacement and the max vertical displacement are the two values we're going to change here. If you increase the horizontal displacement, you'll notice that things start to get 
little bit glitchy and distorted on the horizontal X scale. And the same happens on the Y scale. The way that displacement works is like this. If there's a black area on the source image, it won't move the image at all. But if there's a solid white area, it'll move the image by say 122 pixels. That way we can basically move this image depending on the map of our displacement map. You can change the color that it goes off to displace over here, but red and green, it doesn't really matter because we've got a black and white map. So red and green, you can just leave it on default and it should be fine. Okay, so we're just going to show this layer again. And we're just going to start adjusting these properties. Go to the two minute mark, because in this four minute comp, this is where I want the transition to kind of start. So I'm just gonna go here. I'm just gonna select a value, for example, 400 maybe. I wanna make this really glitchy. You might wanna choose more or less, and of course you can always mess around and customize this later. I'm just gonna do the same in the vertical displacement. If you want to, you can always change this to be something like negative 400 or something like that to change the direction of the displacement. But just for now, I'm just gonna keep it at 400. Now I'm going to activate keyframing for these by clicking on the circles next to the values. To show you what this has done, we can open up the displacement effect and we can see two diamond keyframes here. This shows that at this position, it'll save the values of these to be 400 pixels. Let's go one second before to one second. And let's just zero out these values by typing in zero. And we'll notice new keyframes appear. Now at this point, there'll be no distortion. But as we slowly move along the timeline, it'll get more and more distorted. However, this doesn't look the best as it's really slow and just doesn't look very good. So to change the way that these keyframes interact, just select them all by creating a lasso with clicking and dragging. And then you can select your manual Bezier temple interpolation. Now they'll be smoother, and we can even further adjust this. Let's click out of all of these and enter the value graph. Click on the value you want to adjust, for example, the maximum horizontal displacement, and you can see the value change over time. If we drag the handles down towards this corner, like so, we can see the value slowly moving up and moving up a lot as the transition comes to a, to a height. We can do the same with the vertical displacement as well by clicking on the value and changing it. Now, if we exit the value graph, let's just play this back. And you'll notice that it slowly, slowly becomes more displaced and a lot towards the end. I might just adjust this to make sure that we get a little bit more over here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now the step is to do this for the other layer as well. Just drag the displacement effect onto the second field comp. I'm just going to hide this for now. Then at the two minute mark, I'm just going to set keyframes for it to be 400 and 400. And I'm going to set those keyframes. And then at the three second mark, I apologize, I think I said a minute earlier, but three second mark, I'm just going to zero out these values like so. And I'm just going to select the source layer to be that displacement map. I'm then gonna go ahead and highlight these, change them all to manual Bezier, go into the value graph, adjust these like so, and there we go, we've completed it. Okay, so I have just finished recording this video and I did notice a little bit of a stuff up, not really a stuff up, but as you can see, in the first displacement here, I've gone up to 400, and then I think it's a better idea in the second one to actually go from negative 400. If you take a look at, for example, this rectangular block here, it moves up towards the top left, sorry, the top right. It moves up there and then it continues its motion. Whereas if you had it from 400 and back again, it would go back and forth. And this kind of looks more natural when you have it up and then like that. But again, you can mess around with all of this like, as you'd wish. So now we've got the displacement going and each of them looks glitchy on their own, but we don't have a transition yet. We could cut here and just cut this short like so. And it works, but there's a little thing we can do here to make this more of a glitchy transition. So I'm just gonna control Z to undo those steps and let's create our new mat to make sure that this transition works a little bit more smoothly. I'm just gonna save my project real quick. And now we're going to head, go ahead and create our set mat. Go into the media panel, select your displacement map comp and press control D on your keyboard to duplicate it or command D on a Mac. In the second one, right click rename or press F2 and you can rename it to set mat, or set mat map, or something of that sort. 
Now double click to open it and we have something identical to the displacement plane. Now we're going to change this to be more our set mat. In a similar way that we use the displacement to distort the pixels of this layer, we're going to be using this map to set which pixels should be visible and which should not be. Everything that's white will be visible and everything that is black will not be visible. There are a lot of different ways you can do this, but let's go ahead and use a pretty simple method. Go to two seconds in our timeline. You can open up the effect in the controls panel and under appearance here, go to offset. Offset is kind of like this exposure, but it provides a more grittier feel. It depends on how long you want this transition to last, but I'm gonna go for roughly four frames just to give it a little bit of room, but not too much. So I'm going to use the comma key to go back two frames. And then I'm just going to set a keyframe for the offset to where it's almost completely white. Something like this will do. And then I'm going to go one, two to two seconds and then three, four frames. By the way, I'm using the full stop or the period key there. And then I'm just going to drag the offset down till it's almost black. Now I could make this completely black with the offset effect, but there's one way I can be really sure that this place, this frame after this is gonna be completely black. I'm just gonna go and create a new layer, a new layer, sorry, a new plane layer, a black one, and I'm just going to shorten it so that it starts the frame after this one. And then I'm gonna do the same for a white plane layer, but I'm going to shorten it to be here like so. And now we have our set matte transition. Go ahead and go back to the final comp. Then find your set matte map. That's quite the tongue twister. Drag it down to the bottom of the comp and then apply the set matte effect to just the first field, the image that you have on top. Open it up and in the source layer, select your set matte map. By default, the matte source is alpha which bits are visible and which are transparent, but we have white and black, so select luminance. Then you can scroll back frame by frame and you can watch your transition play back like so. This method is really great because the set matte map uses a similar texture to the displacement map. So it looks pretty real when it's fading in and out like that. If you accidentally did it from white to black or black to white, you can always go ahead and invert it to make sure you get it the right way around. Okay, so let's play this back. I'm just gonna to go to the before the transition and click this RAM preview button here to give me a full preview of it without lag. All right, and there you have it. And now that I'm seeing this, I think my interpolation from before was a little bit off, so I'm just gonna go ahead and adjust that. I'm actually just gonna go back into the displacement and adjust all of this interpolation to make it a little bit tighter. And this is what I mean. You should go ahead, play back RAM preview each part, and then customize it accordingly. Now I'm gonna play this back. And, oh, I'm actually not sure how I feel about that. I might go ahead and adjust the interpolation. Anyway, that's the basics of it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then be sure to click the like button. It'll help others find it, and it'll just, in general, make me feel happy. You can also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I make tons of hit film tutorials like this, and of course, a bunch of other software tutorials as well. You can catch me in the next video, stay shiny.